I don't want to get involved in the circus. Uh, and it really is a circus. I mean, it is just, hey, look the other way. And over here in ring number three. So you take your eye off the ball. And this whole, did President Obama drown his chef? Come on, <laughs> stop it right now. But there is something else that is... I don't know. I can't decide if this is circus or not circus. Uh, former President Barack Obama once wrote that he fantasized about having sexual relations with other men, say biographer David Garrow. Um, the former president expressed his fantasies in a letter to a girlfriend at the time. Garrow told Tablet Magazine in the interview that the letter had been redacted and is currently in the possession of Emory University. The ex-girlfriend provided a copy of the letter, but had redacted one paragraph, Garrow told the tablet, who said she revealed the paragraph was about homosexuality. Some, I'm quoting, sometimes right about when The Rising Star came out, Alex indirectly sold the original, sold these letters, and they ended up at Emory, Garrow told the tablet while discussing it in his 2017 book of Obama. Uh, Rising Star, which touched on Obama's reportedly dreaming about homosexuality. So Emory put out a press release saying, we've gotten these rare letters by Barack Obama with no mention of this paragraph that it was too sensitive. None of the papers mentioned it. Emory didn't mention it. So he says, he uh, wrote to a colleague, said, go to the Emory archives. He spent his whole life at Emory, but they won't let him take pictures, Garrow said later in the interview. So Harvey has to sit there with a pencil and copy out the graph where, Par uh, where Barack writes to Alex about his repeated fantasies about making love to men. Now, <laughs> this is kind of important. Um, because when he got into office, he was uh, against gay marriage and everything else and, and tried to say that, you know, he was, you know, a uh, family values kind of guy. He later revealed that he wasn't a family values kind of guy, but this has been out for a while now. Yeah, this is... And why is it n none of us know about this? Yeah, it's a really weird story, honestly, uh, but it, so it does not... To, to it does not appear to be some massive conspiracy theory or anything like that, um, and and I also don't think the part about him fantasizing about having sex with men is nearly the most important part that's coming out of this. It's a very long article. It's in Tablet Magazine. It's very much worth your time, though. Um, and it comes from so this this guy David Garrow. Now Garrow is um, is a well known author. He wrote The FBI and Martin Luther King Jr., which is a very highly respected book. Um, he mm, won the yeah. Pulitzer Prize for a biography with uh, uh, Bearing the Cross. Um, he, he had he was one of the three historian consultants who uh, animated the monumental PBS documentary Eyes on the Prize, as well as the author of A Landmark History of Abortion Rights, Liberty, and Sexuality. So he's not like some hardcore conservative activist trying to prove some conspiracy theory. That's not his profile right. at all. And this book came out. I think we've had him on the show before, haven't we? We should have him on again about this, because I didn't even know this book was even out. Right. And that's what that the strangest it? part about, about this. It's making the, the rounds to this week because of this article and interview in Tablet. Um, however, the book came out in 2017. Now, if you think back to when this period is, like Trump has just come into office you know, the, the left is going insane. They're protesting in the streets. There's all this stuff going on. And the Obama era had just ended, and we were all kind of happy on the right to be rid of it. I don't think any of us had any interest in reading an Obama uh, early years biography in 2017. That's when this book came out. And it came out really to very little fanfare. I mean, it did, didn't really capture anyone's attention at the time. However, what Garrow did was essentially a lot of the work that we had requested to be done by journalists this entire time. All these stories Barack Obama told about his early years, can someone go find the people he was talking about and ask them these questions? And he did this. In fact, I think he said he talked to a thousand people um, about uh, Barack Obama's history for wow. this book, which came out in 2017. One of the fascinating stories here is about sort of the origin uh, story of Barack Obama. 
in his book, Dreams from My Father, he talked about his change to accepting himself as a black man, right? His accepting the black consciousness that he was born to which, illustrate. Right, which, mm -hmm. which was the change came because he broke up with a racist girlfriend, right? Kind was of, it, yeah. Wasn't that the story? Yeah, yeah. he, he okay. this is from the tablet article. In, in Dreams from My Father, Obama describes a passionate disagreement following a play by African-American playwright August Wilson, in which the young protagonist defends his incipient embrace of the black racial consci consciousness against his girlfriend's white-identified liberal universalism. As readers, we know that the stakes of this decision would be mo but more than simply personal. The black American man that Obama wills into being in this scene would go on to marry a black woman from the south side of Chicago named Michelle Robinson, and after a meteoric rise, win the presidency, of course, as the first black president of the United States. Yet what Garrow documented after tracking down and interviewing this girlfriend, right? So s someone found the girlfriend. And, and what's fascinating about this is he's no longer president of the United States when this book comes out. And Garrow seems to be the first person who's ever even attempted to actually find the other person wow. in the story. Which is... Uh, after about 10 years of that being in print. Yeah. Well, I mean, and longer than that from the actual book, right? Like this is, this goes back. Oh, the book Dreams itself was even earlier than that. So, oh, what's it really? Yeah, throughout the entire rise of Barack Obama to being a senator, to being president, and then his entire mm. eight years in office, nobody bothered to actually find out if any of this was true, which is incredible. So he found the woman who is, by the way, not in witness protection. I mean, she's a professor. Like, she was findable this whole time. Um, and... Again, she's a liberal. I don't think that she was going to talk to necessarily conservatives who tried to find her. But Garrow did find her. And she said the fight did occur. However, the fight was over a very different subject. In her telling, the quarrel that ended the, the couple's relationship was not about Obama's self-identification as a black man. And the impetus was not a play about the American black experience, but an exhibit at Chicago Spurtis Institute about the 1961 trial of Adolf Eichmann. At the time, what? Yeah, um, Chicago politics were being roiled by a black mayoral aide named Steve Coakley, who, in a series of lectures organized by Louis Farrakhan, um, mm. he, they accused Jewish doctors in Chicago of infecting black babies with AIDS as part of a genocidal plot against African Americans. The episode highlighted a deep rift within the city's uh, power uh, circle. Uh, with some prominent black officials supporting Coakley and others calling for his firing. In The Girlfriend's recollect Recollection, which set off the quarrel and uh, per uh, precipitated the end of the couple's relationship, was Obama's stubborn, stubborn refusal after seeing the exhibit and the swirl of the Coakley affair to condemn black racism. I... I I mean, this ties perfectly into, uh, you know, the Jeremiah Wright stuff, right? Like, this is... Correct. Correct. Crucial. This Jeremiah Wright, remember, was saying exactly what Coakley was saying that AIDS was invented Correct. to kill and black people. And Farrakhan. And what Farrakhan yes, was and saying. And Farrakhan. Um, she insists that what upset her that day was Obama's inability to condemn those comments. It was not Obama's blackness that bothered her, but that he would not condemn anti Semitism. Uh, Obama's, uh, of course, they go into this and he goes to, to ask the question well, whose story is correct here? We don't know, of course. Um, but in, in evaluating the truthfulness of these two competing accounts, it seems worth noting that the girlfriend is something more than a woman scorned by a man who would later become president. Obama asked her, Obama asked her to marry him twice. She refused him both times mm. before going to, on to achieve her own high level professional success. A student uh, goes into her, her, her history. She also, um, Scholarship aside, there's another reason to assume that she would be less likely to misremember an incident involving race and anti-Semitism than Obama. As it turns out, her paternal grandparents were members of the Dutch resistance whose role sheltering a Jewish Holy child cow. in their home for three years led to their recognition as righteous among the nations. Uh, we've talked about that wow. distinction many times. It's incredibly important. Yes. In that context, at wow. least, it seems quite likely that she would remember the particulars of a fight with Obama related to anti-Semitism and be turned off by his response, 
while Obama's version to the fight has the feel of an anecdote positioned, if not invented, to buttress the character arc of the protagonist of his memoir, which positioned him for a career in public life. And I think that that plays true. It rings true to me, right? If you have that family history, you're not going to forget the core of this fight, especially no. when that person winds up no. rising to become president of the United States later on. Yeah. It's, it's something that you could uh, see, you know, in, in you or in me, where we could be like, no, I think that was about, and you can conflate different things. But if your breakup is precipitated by something and it is so personal to you, it is, you know, your grandparents were righteous among the nations. Holy cow. It's big. You would remember that. Yeah. You'd remember that. Clearly. Not that your grandparents were Jewish or involved in, you know, anything, but they were part of the Jewish or the, uh, uh, the resistance, the Dutch resistance to free the Jews from the Nazis. And they, they risk their lives enough to be righteous among the nations. That is a specific designation given to a very few amount of people who did unbelievable things to save Jews. Yeah, and if that's your background, that's... you could see how it might be a tad annoying that your boyfriend is hooking is following the teachings of Louis Farrakhan, right? Like this would not be yes. the yes. the formula for a long-lasting relationship, which is to her but word I'm... why it ended. Imagine how different things would have been had she married him. Mm. I mean, just the relationship between uh, Israel and the United States. If she would have married him, I mean, because we both know the effect a really good woman has on somebody. And I'm not saying she's not liberal. She's not. I'm sure she. Yeah, she is. I'm so. sure she would never speak to me. Um, but uh, I would love to talk to her and not about Obama, about her grandparents. I mean, yeah. that's incredible. Incredible. And if. If she would have married him, how different things could have been. Yeah. And I tell you, kids, get married, <laughs> have children, have lots of children. They are, in the end, the only thing that matters. Your whole life will be fulfilled with your family. Um, but uh, marry the right person really important yeah <laughs> marry for values not hotness i know it's tough yeah but she's so hot yeah what are her values mm. marry for values and, and and i i mean it it can be done Stu and i both did it find the hot women that have that have the good values. values yeah and then yeah, get completely I mean, lucky you know, that they'll talk to you uh, that's uh, that's, yeah. that's in my path. <laughs> well, actually, I think what you have to do is become, well, no, not in my case, but I think in your case, you had to be somewhat successful. In oh, my I, case, I was I was literally loser, an intern so I, when I met my wife. I was I, I was a producer, uh, the wow. very lowest level producer uh, when I met her. She came along before yeah, any level Yeah, but you were young, she was young. Yeah, we were dumb. Yeah, we were young I was, and dumb, and that, yeah. that, that, that worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Glenn, can right, I anyway, highlight uh, this point one more time too that we we made real a, quick, a couple yeah. minutes ago? Um, perhaps the most revealing thing about her account with the fight with Obama is that not one reporter in America bothered to interview her before Garrow found her near the end of Obama's presidency. As Obama's live-in girlfriend and closest friend during during the 1980s, she is probably the single most informed and credible source about the inner life of a young man whose election was accompanied by hopes of sweeping post-peaceful change in America, blah, 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 blah. Like, no one bothered to find her until Obama was almost done with his presidency. Remarkable Un commentary on the world of journalism.